Enjoy part one and be sure to watch part two of Colleen's Alberta Adventures. Welcome to a special episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. And today we're going to be talking about Colleen's Alberta Adventures and the nine stores that she got to visit there. But nine. Nine. I got to go to nine <laughs> yarn stores. It was great. <laughs> but before we start, I want to ask Colleen about her actual trip. And I know that in past podcasts, Colleen, you've been talking about needles and if you got past the uh, security and all that. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that on your trip. I did. So I'm asked, as you know, many people, what should I take? And I decided to take some wooden needles. Now I have bamboo, but I needed it to be slicker with the yarn that I was using. So I decided to go to for Knitter's Pride Cubics and it's rosewood. So the tips weren't so big. The cord was very short because I didn't want them to think the cord would need to go away. And I got through security. There was no problem. I knit on the plane. No problem. I've seen people on Instagram with metal needles on a plane, but I know that it really depends on the security guard you get and whether they let you through. So I thought wood was safest and I made it through and had some lovely knitting on the plane. Well, so I'm glad good. that all worked out for you because I know mm -hmm. you were a little bit worried about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your first store that you went to. Okay. I know that you went to nine, as we had mentioned. Yes. <laughs> uh, the first store was called Stash, and I know that you got some stash at Stash. I did. Uh, of course you did. And uh, maybe we could show a little bit of the pictures of Stash right now. Oh, that's great. And then we can come back and you can talk all about that. Perfect. So those were the pictures about Stash, it's amazing. and the pictures looked fantastic. Who was your accomplice into taking those pictures? Usually that's my job. Yeah, that's right. Well, my niece Meredith, mm -hmm. who uh, was with me when we went to Stash, um, she, she was the one that took the picture. So I got a great time to look at yarn, and then she, she took the did, pictures She did a great me. job, too. Yeah, I'm really I don't want to be job. replaced, but I mean... No, uh, definitely not replaced. Yes. But yes. Meredith did a good job, so thank, thank you, you, Meredith. <laughs> so I want to talk about why I chose Stash to start with. I was speaking to my niece, she's just started knitting, um, this is Meredith that we just were speaking about, I just started knitting and um, I thought it would be great if we took a class together. So I looked at Stash's website and they had what they called a color work crash course. And so it's a two and a half hour class, sometimes knitting classes go week over week and I knew I didn't have time so I thought two and a half hours we could do this. It just said that you had to be able to knit, purl and cast on which she could do. So she did some practicing. Um, we did a little practicing the night before we went um, and she was ready to go. So the way that this is, this is what I made in the class. So if you can hold that up, that would be great. Um, so we did stranded work. We did intarsia with two colors. And so that was the project that we made. And the other thing that was great and our teacher Jen was very helpful is that you learned how to use a chart to knit. I'd done some color work before, so it wasn't new to me that way, but sometimes when you learn from a book, you wanna make sure that you have learned it properly. So it was nice to have that instruction. I'm really happy with it. This wool feels a little, uh, well, it feels like there's wool in it. It yes. feels very rustic. It is rustic. And I'm what I wanna do with it is I'm gonna try and felt it a little bit because Jen said she uses them as coasters. Do you mean put felt on the back? No, felted means throw it in hot water, the wool kind of goes and oh. then it gets more dense and then it would be a great coaster. Well, who knew? I know. Very so good idea. That's good. So the nice thing about the class is you got your needles, you got a darning needle, you got the yarn, you got the chart. Um, I had enough, you get enough yarn for two of these and um, I gave the rest of it to Meredith. So she liked my colors that I chose. She chose some browns and it was beautiful as well. She did a great job. The other thing that you got was this lovely thing, which is a yarn cutter. Were you allowed to have that on the plane? I did. It no was problem. In, no problem. It was in my carry-on and it was not a problem at all. So I was happy about that. So the class was two and a half hours. Uh, Stash is on 9th um, Avenue Southeast in Inglewood. So it's a 
It's a little community in Calgary. It's beautiful. There's some really cool shops down there. Uh, we went to Silk Road and it, it has spices and oh my goodness, the smell in that store was brilliant. So we did that. After our class, we went across the street to a pizza place called Without Papers. You would have loved it. Yes. It was kind of funky and it was cool and uh, pizza was amazing. Um, and so we had some lunch because we needed to get some energy back. So but then we were back to shop. So as I mentioned earlier, Meredith was taking pictures and I kind of lined myself up in front of the place where all the Indie Dyer yarn was. Stash has so many different kinds of yarns. I can't even list them all, but I'm going to give you some. So they have Sea Turtle and Brooklyn Tweed and Flock Fiber and Ancient Arts and Yarn Ink and Hedgehog Fibers. So they have lots of those kind of yarns, but they also have Cascade and Barocco. So there's something for everybody there. So it was great. I did miss you though, because I needed you to help me with colors. There were so many to choose from and I I was a little yeah. lost, to well, be honest Well, it sounds like it was a great day there though. Uh, with it what really you're was. And, you know, it was a nice day for Meredith and you guys to bond. So yeah, we awesome. had a good time. Now I was looking for some yarn for a three color shawl. I had looked at the Jody shawl by Hohi Locatelli. It needed DK yarn and I just didn't seem to be able to find three colors that would work. So then I thought, okay, if I get fingering weight yarn, I could either make a smaller shawl with that pattern, or um, there's a Hohi Locatelli one that's called the three color cashmere shawl. I didn't buy cashmere, but the yarn would work. So I chose, and it was intentional, I wanted to make sure on my trip to Alberta that I tried to get as much yarn as I could that was actually from Alberta. So Yarn Ink, um, which is dyed by Alicia, uh, Alicia, I think is how she says her name. She uh, produces this a little south of Calgary, but it's really close to Calgary. So I chose three colors, so I'm going to show them to you. The first one is called Pandora, and this is on her classic sock. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It feels amazing. It does. It feels fantastic. And the colors, like, oh my goodness, it's so tonal. So what that means is it's not plain brown, right? There's hints of a lighter brown, darker, like it's all in there. It's so beautiful. It so is that's nice. Pandora. Nice. So the second one I got to go with that was Creek. And I had seen this one um, on, I think it was the Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters. They had used it. It's got yellow and brown and a blue color. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. It goes very it, well together. You I did was a great so job. happy now, with that. Were these sitting together or did you have to kind they of were, put your head together? And Yeah, they were in the same kind of cubicle space because all the yarning stuff was right. there. Um, so that was helpful. Um, and then the third one I had trouble with. But I ended up with this. This is called Ember. Same classic sock. It's got a little fleck of black and a little fleck of an orangey color. I think you did a great job. And I think it was okay. Yeah, well, did a great job. as I said, I missed you to be in there, but I think I did okay. I decided that if all I can do is do a two color shawl, that this ember could go with anything. And so I decided to get those three. Well, you did a great job in stash. I did. I had a great time. It was nice. I said to Meredith, you are the most patient woman almost as patient as you are. Um, she took pictures, she helped me look at colors, um, and so it was a great time. Now, the one thing that Meredith did for me while I was there is she bought me this little panda row counter. Oh my gosh, so cute. Can, so, before we go on, can yeah. you, how long of a flight is it to uh, Alberta from here? How long um, it's a, about four hours. And they're two hours behind, so I you, you dropped me off at the airport at a early but the plane right. left about 6 30 and I was in Calgary at their time at 8 30. That's not too bad. Yeah. yeah so I had been to Hong Kong about three years ago well, almost four years ago now and that is a 16 hour flight straight. So four so, hours is absolutely nothing. Nothing. So I sat in it right. watched a little bit of tv um read a little bit of a book and by the time it was done it was done so oh, it was good. Fantastic. Yeah. good. It was a great trip. The flight was great so that's my adventure at Stash absolutely loved it. I want to go back sometime. I'll take you with me when we go. Perfect. So I had a great time there and the next store I went to was Pudding Yarn.
Well, that was the pictures of Pudding Yarn. It looks like another great yarn store, and I'm wondering how it got its name. I don't know the answer to that. It's an odd name for a yarn <laughs> store, but... I know. have to tell you, it was a great yarn store. So it's on 6th Street Southwest, 1516 is the number. Um, and it is a, a bit of a tinier shop than Stash, but it is beautiful. It's got... Um, it's based on, I was speaking to Barb, who wasn't the owner, but I was speaking to Barb, who was working, lovely lady, and she was saying that the owner had gone to Pearl Soho in New York City and based her store, wanted it to look a little bit like Pearl Soho. So maybe wow. Pearl Soho we can go to sometime. For, for okay, sure. Okay, that oh, would be sure. great. Now, um, being in New York, is she trying to emulate something from New York? Is it upscale? Is it? Yeah, the yarns were upscale. They were beautiful. They were free of hand paints, hedgehog fibers, ancient arts, shibui, wool folk, beautiful yarns. And lots of books and lots of magazines to look at. I really enjoyed the store. Once again, Meredith was with me. She kind of designed a day of us visiting a lot of yarn stores. And so she was my photographer. Once again, missed you. Yes. But uh, she was my photographer and we enjoyed it was a it was a really nice store i thought the same about the name pudding yarn but it's a it's a great store so i would recommend it highly it'd be interesting to find out how why they named it that like there's yeah. got to be a story behind that exactly we'll have to do some yeah, googling we'll to do and see what we research. can research and see what we can find out so when i was there once again i was on the hunt for classic things around alberta and i decided to go with ancient arts because they're out of alberta um and i chose two so i decided a two color shawl Anytime you're going to do a shawl, you could either do one skein or two skein, but I decided if I got two colors, I could use one or use both, depending. So the first one that grabbed me was this yarn, which is called, oh, it's, yep, it's Superwash Merino and 75% and 25% silk. It is beautiful. And Ancient Arts tends to name its colorways after animals or after, in this case, it's after a bird. So this is named after the great blue heron. Oh, wow. The colors look like a blue heron, don't they? They do. Absolutely. And you can see, if you if we look at all that color, oh my goodness, there's blues and grays. It's Purple just so pretty. Too. It is gorgeous. So to go with that, um, I decided, once again, this is merino and silk. And this is called Russian blue. Russian blue? It looks very gray. Why would they call this <laughs> Russian blue, do you think? Well, if you take a look at the picture of that little cat <laughs> on the is side. The cat on there? Yep, it is. And so that's the color of a Russian blue cat. So it's a gray, but it's a blue gray. Um, and I thought it went really nicely with the great blue heron. And what I read on this um, is that a portion of the proceeds from this yarn will be donated by Ancient Arts to charities benefiting stray and abandoned cats. Oh, nice. So that is nice. That's very nice. So this is called the Meow Collection. I know they also have some that are based on dogs, different oh, type, types of so dogs. Nice. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to putting those together. Feels very nice. Oh, yeah. it feels beautiful. Yeah. And the silk is going to give it that strength and the merino is soft. Oh, I'm so happy about that. So well, that's good. I'm glad you had fun at putting yarn and I really I enjoy your stash and it's not too much, which is a good thing. <laughs> Well, that was you had whole, nine stores to go though. Trying to figure out what, what to put in a suitcase when you only had a carry on was a little tricky. But now, speaking of suitcase, mm -hmm. um, did you not pack up uh, little bags you took? I know that. How did that work out? What did you call those little bags? There's little bags. That you oh, take. they're called packing cubes. So when I was packing to go away, I, I had watched some videos of what to take if you're going away for a week, those kind of things. And you can buy these packing cubes. So they're little zippered. Um, cubes and you put in what you want and you zip it so it's almost like having little mini suitcases inside your suitcase and that worked out well it worked out work really well? well it's a great way to do it because i had t-shirts in one i had socks and underwear in another one i had pants in one. so it was easy to say i want to grab a t-shirt i want to grab some socks and you could go so it was a great way of organizing so when we're heading off to scotland we could recommend that i would recommend that highly i really really like that it great. also helps when I was trying to figure out how to get all my yarn in my suitcase to come home. But we'll talk about that. <laughs> that's another, that's a whole other project. That's a whole other adventure, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, on to our next store, which is... The Loop on Kensington.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the photos from Loop in Kings on Kensington. It's yeah, on Kensington. Well, yeah. that sounds like a nice name for a store. And how was that uh, store? Like, did they carry a lot of yarn or what kind of yarn? They, they did. Carry? They had all kinds of yarns. Um, they didn't have like some of the really super expensive yarns but they carried all kinds and they actually dye their own and I debated whether to buy some um, so they have you'll see some in the pictures that say the loop so that's some of the ones that they're creating it was great now the the loop on Kensington is where Meredith first went to shop to buy some yarn oh nice and the people were great there there were lots of things to see they had lots of samples it was organized really well did you see them dyeing the yarn is there a place that you can see is it all done back room and they just bring the yeah, I think they just up. do it, um, I'm not even sure, probably off-site and then bring it in. Oh, okay. But it's really, really nice yarn. And they had some really cool things. So while we were looking around, Meredith, you know, brought me over and said, you've got to see this. So they had done some needle felted characters. Um, there was one that was a famous oh, artist. Photos, yeah. yeah, so it was really cool. And when I asked her about that and the lady about that, we found out that it was actually an art teacher who was creating these things. She had, this art teacher had decided that kids that were going to be in detention might be doing, some, might as well be doing something pr productive. So she started teaching them how to knit while they were in detention, great idea. which is great. And what happened was kids wanted to come in even if they didn't have a detention. And there's actually a waiting list. Now there's a knitting club, which I thought was really cool. Now do they sell the products? They do. So what they make, they'll sell and then they give money back um, to places where they can buy goats for people all over the world, that kind of thing. So they want to help out other people. So what a great idea. It's really nice. And the lady that we spoke to there was amazing. So I was looking around for something a little that I hadn't seen before. And what I found was this. So it's called Lang Novena Color. You want to hold that up for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I bought two of them. It has got 50% wool, 30% alpaca and 20% polyamide or nylon. And I love the colors because I have different colors of coats. And so I thought if I got this and I made a cowl, it would be nice to go. So I have a blue coat, I have a navy coat, um, and I have a gray coat, and I thought it would, it would be nice. It would certainly go, all those colors would certainly go with everything exactly. you just mentioned there. Now, so. the question was, do I buy one, do I buy two? And I thought, if I buy two, what the... A lady in the store said, if you buy two, you can probably make a cowl and maybe a pair of fingerless mitts. So I'm really excited about that. It was a little different, and I'm really happy with that. I'm going to hardly wait to make great. those things. Well, it sounds like you had a nice time at Loop in, of Kensington. Loop on Kensington, I yes. did. That's great. Okay. Well, on to our next store, which is called... Gina Browns. Now, I'm going to put some pictures up of Gina Browns, and um, we'll be right back. I hope you enjoyed the pictures of Gina Browns. Again, another great looking store, great photos. Sounds like you had a great day. And uh, what did you, what was your adventure like in Gina Browns? So Gina Browns was, was more in kind of an industrial place. So it was a huge store. It was amazing. And they had a lot of um, different kinds of yarns. They had some that were um, special things like Zen Garden and Malabrigo. They had some of those kind of things. And then they had some acrylic yarns. If I was making something for a baby, I need acrylic yarns. So it was a really nice combination. Um, the owner was great. She was really helpful with us. Um, once again, we were allowed to take pictures. We looked around a lot. Oh my gosh, so many things I could have purchased, but I didn't. I'm, I'm glad you had a small suitcase. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there was quite a variety of yarns. There was uh, Cascade, uh, Barocco, Malabrigo, uh, Mirasol. I love Mirasol yarn. That's the one that donates to schools and being a teacher, I like that. So they had all kinds to look at. Now, what I was lucky to find, because you can't always find that, is this yarn, which is called Cascade Heritage that Wave. That would be great. And I had actually purchased a skein of this for Meredith um, so that she could start a shawl while I was out visiting. And I kind of liked the color that I bought for her. 
So I made sure it was okay with her. She said then we could have matching shawls and I said that would be lovely. It feels really nice. Um, I've done one that is a, like a nightshade color. This is called Plume, P-L-U-M-E, and it's beautiful. 501, I think, is the number, and I really like it. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to make a one skein shawl for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like had a nice time you, at you, Gina Brown's. Yeah, like I say, you, you have knit one with this type, not this color. And right. It turned out very well. Yeah, I really, really like it. So really it's going to be it. interesting to see this one and uh, how that turned exactly. out. Exactly. So. so we had a great time there. Good. So. Then on to our next store. And that would be Villacula Handmade. I hope you enjoyed the pictures of the last yarn store that we just saw and uh, you can tell us all about that Colleen and what that was like. All right so the name of it is Villacula Handmade. The owner is Christine Hamilton. She once again we are very lucky that when we go around and talk to yarn store owners they're very gracious and they let us in and she went to art college and loved art and thought she wanted to work in a museum and then for many reasons decided that wasn't going to be a good idea and she decided that she would open this yarn store. And this yarn store is amazing. It used to be a plumbing store. Hmm. Yeah, I know, you wouldn't see it. She's made it bright, it's airy, lots of nice light from the windows. Um, and she does more than just yarn. So she also does sewing and she's got some sewing patterns that she sells. She's got lots of different yarns. So she's got Artville, Lichen and Lace, Estelle, Cascade, Manistel Uruguay. Oh my goodness, so many hard to mention. And that's the fun part about doing these adventures and, and starting this project is because we get to talk to so many cool people and Absolutely. hear so many cool stories. Exactly. Um, I just love it. I love uh, this interesting kind of stuff. I know. And people's and I, I, I mean, I loved spending time with my family. I really enjoyed it. I would have had even more fun with you being yeah. there as well but you were so gracious to let me go and visit and um travel to all these nine yarn stores so well, it was good we have been out together out to calgary and we we have done the touring part so maybe next time we go we can visit a few yarn stores in our adventure and also show be... you some pictures of some of the mountains and uh, oh, that would lake be great. louise and that because those that are kind of great neat, yeah. absolutely so i was looking around trying to find something and sometimes yarn just speaks to you and i know if you're a knitter, you know that. Um, so what I found was this lovely thing, which is called from Lichen and Lace. Now it's a one ply fingering. So um, it is so soft and it is called Beach Glass. That's the colorway. And I am so happy with this and it's gonna knit up nicely. I had done something by Fleece Artist that was in a slim merino, similar type of yarn and it blocked so nicely. I'm really looking forward to that. It feels very nice. It will. So it's yeah. going to be a one skein shawl of some sort, but I was really, really happy with it. That's how I shop for yarn. I either shop by color or by feel. Right. And usually it feels quite yeah. soft. You're usually pretty good at picking up yeah. yarn that feels very soft. And, and both you and Meredith are really great when you're shopping with because you will be looking, I tend to get fixated and you kind of go all over the place and then you say, what do you think about this? And lots of times that's what I choose to buy. So it's really nice. So while we were in the store, the Villacula Handmade store, I said to Meredith, listen, I would love to sew you another project bag. So I had made her one with the zipper and I thought she might like one that was a drawstring. So I said look at the fabric here, see if there's anything that really speaks to you that you like um, and I will take it home with me and I'll make the project bag and I'll send it back to you. That was nice. So I decided to buy a full meter so this is nice. So I'm going to make myself I'll one as well. Up. So if you hold that up that's great. So it is by miriambrothers.com and it's called the Hidden Garden. So there's all kinds of plants and flowers and shapes and those kind of things. Watering it's, cans, I see. What, yeah, and plants. all kinds of things. So it's it's organic cotton. So I haven't washed it yet. I know it's going to be beautiful. So I asked Meredith what color she wanted me to put it with. So she has some ideas. So once I get it done, I will let you see. It'll be a finished object that I can show Good you. Good choice, Meredith. She did yes, a great job. I'm glad. So the nice thing that Christine did, and I didn't know this. Christine, the owner. Christine, the owner, did was she threw in some, first of all, she threw in some soap, which is called green apple. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. Here, you need to smell that. 
Oh, that's lovely. It that is, is lovely. lovely. So what I'm finding is I love to put a little bar of soap in my project bag because then your knitting, your yarn smells like that. I'm careful that I put it in a bag so it's not going to mark the yarn, but I really like that So It says here, handmade by a pharmacist. Well, there you go. I it's love it beautiful. when you read the labels, you find out so many things. <laughs> exactly. So the other thing that she did was she threw in some sample packages of soak. I love this. It helps you um, condition your yarn. And my brother had a scarf that I he wanted me to do that with. So I had two packages, so I used one on his scarf, and I brought this one home with me. Pineapple Grove. Nice. And you'd probably be allowed that on the plane because it's hardly yep, anything there's there. hardly anything. I think there's a teaspoon actually in there. That means anything. So that's what that is. So I really enjoyed Villacula Handmade. The one picture you have is Meredith underneath the sign. So I love that we've got the photographer in there as well. I had a great time. Meredith called it Our Little Yarn Crawl, those four stores that we did um, on that one day. Uh, so we had a great time. I have so more glad. stores to talk about. So we're going to have a part two. And so when we see you next, we'll be talking about part two of my Alberta adventures. Until next time. You take care.